रोड टू सक्सेस इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय एक्विटी बैंक एक्विटी बैंक यू आर लिस्निंग केयरिंग पार्टनर सक्सेस एंड मनी डोंट चेंज पीपल they only amplify what was already there you're watching road to success the key to your next level in business this week our guest is pekins murungi who has invited us to see what a hobby can do to change your life karibu sana asante thank you for inviting us um and to see the amazing work you can do with something that you're passionate about tell us about the farm that we are in currently sitting in this uh tausi bird sanctuary based in karen we mostly mostly do with the exotic birds as a way of local tourism to for both educative purposes and for fun loving people who love birds yeah because i do it also as a hobby what inspired the idea of tausi farm my dad used to keep these birds bef- uh, so we brought up in the environment of birds so i've known them from when i was little uh, although i started uh, with the local chicken but slowly slowly introduced the exotic birds and i developed a keen interest on them seeing people come visit home then they are interested in knowing these birds their origin and i developing a keen eye then i opted to do these birds in future after my schooling so you knew you will eventually what take over from your father or i i did i did even if not taking over i would start my own because your background is ICT yes i've done ICT from jcot worked for around 3 uh, years graduated 6 years ago 3 years i worked in a formal empl- employment but again there was not that satisfaction that i was seeking so i decided to venture into bird farming although i was doing it as a side hustle but then i saw it thrive bird farming brings you a lot of satisfaction what kind of satisfaction does it bring to you it does one these birds uh, it's a uh, therapeutic so yeah you just feel easy again they are my first babies i f- feel happy while feeding them seeing them seeing them grow multiply eventually selling them yeah. uh, also as a source of income so yeah and it's uh, i really have my own pleasure on my own time on my own boss here tell us what kind of birds do you house at uh, tausi uh vocherin guinefowl i have helmeted i uh, have also the taus itself now peacock i also have crested crane i have pheasants i have uh, pigeons different varieties of pigeons king pigeons fantail pigeons yes and a variety of bantam this bantam chicken why do you call them exotic mostly they need licensing from the kenya wildlife services so initially they are wild birds but we try, we tame them so they are domesticated that's why and they are not like uh, locally available some of them like pheasant why are you so passionate about birds one I, i i love nature i love nature in general i love i love nature and uh, birds well for one educative purposes because uh, with the few people i've interacted with who come visit my farm most like 90% or 95% they see these birds for the first time so they are like these birds you see you mean they are available here in the country we don't have to go outside kenya to see some of these birds like the pheasant like the peacock like they they are locally available here burungi this is primarily not about tourism there are other reasons why you started tausi farm tell us that passion driven with passion i guess not even not only tausi any business with passion then it it's, it's a main, it, it will thrive eventually So again so we target mostly students there's a gap very few know of these birds they exist I even seen them for learning purposes so they grow knowing these birds and most of them they appreciate and end up keep them even for even even if it's for like a hobby we really want to take a break but when we come back you'll tell us what it takes to run a farm such as Tausi you're watching road to success the key to your next level in business don't go away Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week we are at the Tausi Bird Sanctuary with Parkins Murungi. Thank you for inviting us. Welcome, welcome. What does it take to run a bird sanctuary? I keep insisting passion. Yeah. Uh, cuz some of these things you have to do like uh, cuz out of love for birds. Yeah. Cuz if you look at the business business perspective only, then you are bound to fail if you make no sales. or nobody comes to visit your farm. Do you go through that? That was a risk I was I was ready to take. 
But uh, if you market yourself, you know what you're doing, then eventually people appreciate what you're doing. And you do it professionally, then people eventually, slowly, they appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. What about capital? I mean, you said that you do in, import a lot of um, your eggs. Yeah. Um, what does it take when it comes to capital? Capital is not necessarily the issue. The issue is an idea. You, there are very many people around who are willing to fund an idea. But an idea is only, it remains an idea if you just, with it, you speak it out, you sell to people, then eventually the people willing to fund your idea. That's why we liars with people, like uh, we'll, that's partnership, we lease lands with partnership with people just by selling our idea with no capital at all. So the idea is what becomes your capital? Becomes your capital. Is that what you've done? Yeah, that's what I've, I've done, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, give us an idea of what you have done when it comes to using your idea as a capital. As capital. I approach a person with an idea of uh, developing a bat sanctuary. Like the, I don't own this land where you're sitting in at the moment. So I approach somebody, then I give them an idea, I want to start a bat sanctuary. You explain the process, then what is it for? Eventually, these people, they fund your idea. Like they, they can put up structures for you. For, now for you, now is to source birds and uh, introduce them there. And birds you don't have to buy like big birds that cause some cost to a maximum even a hundred thousand. You can start with chicks or eggs. You don't have to have the hundred thousand to start with a mature. You can start with an egg, hatch the egg slowly, then slowly as it grows then you multiply your stock. You also mentioned that you import a lot of these uh, eggs. There must be a cost implication when it comes to that. It does, but it varies with different countries and the availability. Because most of these birds, they, most of the exotic birds, they are seasonal birds. They don't like lay or breed all through the year. They are seasonal birds. So you have to know when they are breeding different countries, when you can get fertilized eggs. Because again, eggs, they have a fertility period of a maximum 14 days, but we recommend 7 to 10 days. So you have to like have a genuine farm, uh, farms wherever. We do research mostly, we do research and know where these birds are available. Then that's when we can bring in eggs. Is there any consideration when it comes to the climate? Because they may not adopt, do they all adopt to our African um, climates? Well, not really, but most of them, most of the exotic birds, because mostly, most of them they do. Very few don't. Well, but uh, once, uh, th that's why we prefer bringing uh, eggs instead of live birds. What are the challenges that you go through or encounter uh, with a bird sanctuary a farm such as yours? Uh, mostly with birds is a uh, disease. Uh, things like Newcastle, it's a very deadly, deadly disease in birds. But we go through one, we maintain hygiene with the birds. Uh, again, we do vaccination. We follow the vaccination of those birds, like Newcastle. Uh, previously, it was around uh, every four months, three to four months, you do. But again, now there is a vaccine that can last, can go for 12 months. That's a whole year, just vaccinate once. So, mostly it's hygiene. Then I keep in touch with my birds. Some of these are affected only even by fleas. So, you have to dust the area. Just I generally, I hygiene once that's observed, then vaccination, then you're you rarely lose birds. The area we are keeping peacocks, there were also rabbits around there. So they are very sensitive to fleas, so you treat it for anything else, but, and the fleas, what they do, they suck blood. So you treat it for anything else. So we lost quite a number in the process. Or when there's an outbreak of uh, Newcastle, some of them, even, through, even uh, after going vaccination, you might lose one or two. Yes. If I wanted to keep a, pet, a bird as a pet, what, what uh, advice would you give me? Uh, and you, one, we, we advise, uh, one, you know, we advise on the feeding techniques, vaccination, because you again, you have to be very keen with the diseases with these birds. What do you mean feeding techniques before we go to the diseases? Uh, different birds, different type of feeds, oh, depending okay? on their stage of life where they are, from chicks to adults. Like mostly peacocks, you see they love greens. Uh, this, most of these exotic birds, even guinea fowl, ducks, they love most of greens. If you have, you're doing ducks, you have to have like a, a pool where they can swim. M most of them, like geese, they mate in the water. So even to know how they breed. Some of these birds, like peacock, like uh, guinea fowl, they don't breed in a confined area. You have to let them uh, free range. For somebody who wants to start a bird sanctuary, let's say in Kakamega, what advice would you give them? First, uh, learn your market. You have to know your target. Who are you targeting? So you have to know a specific area where you're opening the same thing. So why did you choose Karen? 
Uh, current, I've been brought around this place uh, again. So many people knew me, knew my dad through while, while we were still in Karen. But we are we are, we are like building others in different sanctuary, different counties. Currently, we are going to Chuka to open another one, and slowly we introduce these birds to different other counties. counties. Yes. What would you say has attributed to the success of Tausi Farm? Patience. Patience, because at times it took quite a while before it peaked, before people came to appreciate bird viewing, what's this fuss about birds. But again, uh, some of these uh, things, their beauty sells them without even you selling the bird itself. So that's why we target mostly hotels, also individuals. What would you say would be the lessons that you have learned over the years? For any business, uh, you have to be very, very patient with it. And again, you have to you, you have to keep learning these things, because uh, birds. These are just quite a very few number of birds we have here. You have to keep learning, then keep researching, know what birds are available in the market, because uh, again, you, you can't be seeing a guinea fowl for the next 20 years the same thing. So we intro we try to introduce different birds into the sanctuary. What are the kind of challenges that you experience when you're importing your the eggs? Once you import, they have to go through the scanning. Mm -hmm. So some of the, actually a number of eggs will get spoiled in the process because of the rays growing through the egg. So that's one of the main challenges. Are you so, compensated? No, you're not. That's a part of the risk you're taking by importing these birds. Because currently the laws of Kenya, they don't allow uh, importation of live birds into the country because uh, of the diseases, diseases uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So controlling that, no, they just like this, you can only bring eggs mm. and for specific, not, or not all birds, mm. yes. Uh, and if I want to start a business such as this, I must obviously go through KWS. You have to go through KWS, yes. For again, the, even the green commercial, you have, to, you have to have a license generally for these exotic birds. What is your dream for Tawusi? My dream is to have bird, at least a bird sanctuary in each and every of the seven counties we have in Kenya. Mostly my target is for this young generation coming up to grow learning about this thing. What you said earlier was that partnership is important. Would yes. you then partner with a lot of these young people if they're interested in setting up a sanctuary in whatever location they are in? Yes, and I have, and again, cause, uh, and actually to young people, most of them, even I offer free consultation. Uh, so I take them through uh, from, where they were, from when they are chicks until they are mature. I offer free consultation through until they kick off completely. Mm -hmm. Then they are good to go. Thank you so much, Murungi. I'm actually very inspired. Asante and I'm sure a lot of people are very inspired by so the kind of work that you're doing and the kind of interest you're generating when it comes to these exotic birds, something we would never have known. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, too. Yeah.